Hi, I'm Greg Sales. I'm the lead for instructional design and e-learning for the One Health Workforce Project funded by USAID out of the University of Minnesota. I've been asked by Indahoon to present a series of videos, short videos, that will cover online learning, design, and development. When you get around to actually creating a, an entire course, uh, in addition to the nine events of instruction, which really kind of focus at a lesson level, uh, we've created a what we call a 14-step model that guides you through the development of an entire course. Now, at a university or academic kind of setting, often the first three or four steps of this may have been done for you. Uh, the first step is to conduct a needs uh, assessment to identify the needs for this course. Second, you develop the goals. Third, you might conduct uh, a learner analysis, environmental analysis, your constraints and so forth. But the, the fourth one is to identify prerequisites. Those are often done in an academic setting because your students are matriculating through the curriculum. They start at the lower end and work their year through, through the first year, second, and all the way up through to graduation. So often in academic environments, we don't focus on it much. Where the real work comes in is when we get to step five. Step five is writing the objectives. Now often universities provide you some guidance on what you're supposed to teach in a course, but they're not really very well-written objectives. Really, a well-written objective will tell you who the learner is, what the behavior is you want to see from them, the conditions that will exist that elicit that behavior, and then the level of performance or the degree of performance that you want to see. By writing your objectives in a format that contain that information, you're also then going to make sure that you address everything in the course that needs to be taught in order to move on to uh, the, the content development. After you've created the objective though, before you go to content, we always work on development of the assessment. Remember I said the assessments get developed before the content. It's a very strange approach for most people. They think I'll talk about it first and then I'll write my test. But in reality, if you write your assessment first, you'll know the behavior and the conditions for that behavior that you're going to want to assess at the end. For example, if you want students to demonstrate that they can inject a patient with a, a vax, properly inject them with a vaccine, then you want to teach them that in the course and you're going to know that you're going to assess it by having them demonstrate that they have the skill. So by writing the behavior and the constraints, so maybe you have them uh, inject a, a juvenile, a child, small child, a young adult, and an adult. Maybe there are different approaches to how to do those things. And then when you do your assessment, you know uh, the condition is to have the variety of people that have to be injected, and the behavior is to properly inject them. Moving on then, um, once you know how you're going to be assessing, you know how you need to teach. You know that you want to build the um, knowledge and skills to prepare the students to perform what they're going to need to perform in the assessment. If you don't create high-level assessments that involve more than simple answers like multiple choice, true, false, and so forth, you're going to run into problems and your content will start to wander and be very strange. You want to create assessments that assess at the cognitive level you want and then your course will teach at that level. Sometimes we teach at a high level and we assess at a very low level. So you can use tools like Bloom's Taxonomy to help you. There's a thing called, if you're creating online learning, called the Pedagogical Wheel. You can look it up on Google and it will help you with uh, figuring out how to do the, uh, select the verbs for your objectives, de develop your assessments and create activities that are gonna be useful in an online setting. Once you've gone through the development of the content, uh, the writing of the content, you need to produce any assets, videos, uh, audios, animations, graphics, um, any tables, charts, collect x-rays or diagrams or uh, whatever you might need for the course. Bring those things together, assemble them into individual lessons and then full courses, and then you're ready to conduct a pilot and make revisions. In the model you'll see it's an iterative model. You, you go through this process, it's very linear for a while, your objectives lead to your assessments, your assessments lead to your content, your content leads to production of assets, and then you go through the pilot, you test it, you look at how well it's working, and then you come back around and make revisions if you need to. 
If you've made a lot of revisions, you're going to want to pilot it again to make sure those revisions work. After you've done that um, and you're confident and comfortable, then you move down to actually implementing the course, conducting a summative evaluation. Your formative evaluation told you what you needed to do to improve the course where you're creating it. Your summative evaluation is going to tell you how successful the course is. It'll look at whether students enjoyed the course, whether they learned from the course, whether they can use what they've learned potentially, and maybe it'll even inform you whether development of the course was worth the time and energy and expense that you went to to create it. And then finally, you're going to maintain this course. Again, as I said in an earlier video, when you create a course, it's going to require maintenance evaluation. You're going to learn things each time you use it, and you may need to update it. Sometimes the content will change, requiring an update. So you need to maintain the course as you use it over time, and eventually, as I said, you may need to retire it. I want to thank you for watching along on these videos. Hope you've enjoyed them and learned some things. Hope your e-learning development goes well. On the screen, you'll notice there are a few links that have been provided. If you use these links, you can download materials that we've talked about on, on the uh, various programs. I want you also to notice there's an email address. Please use that email address to send us your feedback. Let us know what we might be able to do to help you with the development of online learning or future activities as we go forward. Again, thanks for watching.